Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at Valdez. This is the second proof in, I'm sorry, the second city in chapter 10, uh, or after chapter 10. Sorry, my printer is just acting up here, if you can hear that in the background. Um, I picked Valdez for us to do because it has a lot of proofs in it of the five problems that are in there. Four of them are proofs. Um, I don't want to do all of them because I feel like um, there's really an advantage to being there in the classroom and you having to think about what you would say or what, what statements you would use, what reasons you would use. So I just picked two of the proofs and then the one non-proof for us to do. So the first one that we're going to do is problem one, which says prove the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of the circle. So I've got the uh, drawing that they've given here, statement, reason, and in the book, they've drawn this as A and B, and this is D and C. We know that CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB, all right? So it says prove that the perpendicular bisector, so we have the perpendicular bisector of a chord, passes through the center of the circle. What we don't know is that it actually passes through. It could potentially do something like this and just kind of bypass it, ever so slightly. So that's what we're trying to prove is that it has to be in the center of the circle. Okay, so statement one, um, we're going to have CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. All right, reason, this is Nate's job right here, given. All right. The next thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to say, he doesn't say it, but I'm going to say uh, draw AO and uh, OB, all right, which do go from the center of the circle out to the edge. All right, again, sometimes he does this, sometimes he doesn't, but we're going to do it this time. And the reason is two points determine a line. Okay, again, we, we touched upon this last week when we were in class, um, and we said that this is a, a very typical thing to do when we have a circle, is that we can draw to any point on the edge, and we know that when we connect the center to the edge, it forms a radius, and they will always be congruent. So we're going to say OA and OB are equal. All right, reason is because all radii are equal. All right, now, hopefully you're looking at this and finally this is kind of like stuck in your head that this is related to Cupid's Bow Theorem. All right, remember that little movement I do in class when you guys aren't sure what it is and I have to kind of get you to remember that. This is it, Cupid's Bow Theorem. Hold on, I'm just going back to confirm that it's actually Cupid's bow and not converse of Cupid's bow theorem. And I need to find that lovely picture in the book, sorry. I should have marked this off first. All right. Uh, converse of Cupid's bow theorem says if any point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it must lie on the perpendicular bisector. So um, that is what we're using right here. That we have a point right here which is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, and therefore it must lie on the perpendicular bisector. And so we could say right here um, that O lies on the perpendicular bisector. And you could say converse of Cupid's bow theorem, or you could write out Cupid's bow theorem, which says if any point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it must lie on the perpendicular bisector. Fred wrote that out for you in the um, in his proof right there. I'm not going to do that just because it takes too long. Oh, and I'm realizing now it says that that it's converse of Cupid's bow. Okay, 
Uh, that is problem one. Problem two that we're going to look at says um, prove that no circle contains three collinear points. And remember that collinear means they all have to be on the same line. So for example, these three are collinear because they all lie on the same line. These three are not collinear because there's no single line that can go through all of them. A line could go through two but not all three. All right, so our statement and our reason and uh, our given is going to be we have three distinct points A, B, and C on circle O. And again, generally they call a circle by its center and most times they call it O, so you'll see a lot of circle O's. All right, reason, given. Okay, now we have three points that lie on a circle. So let's say that we've got A, B, and C, right, that lie on the circle. Um, we're trying to prove that these, uh, that we cannot have them be collinear. So the best way to do this proof, and again, we have not done many of these, and some of the others also are of this format, is uh, proof by contradiction or an indirect proof. So how can we prove that they're not collinear? Let's assume that they are and we'll end up with something that's just garbage. So assume A, B, and C are collinear. All right. Now reason, again, if you remember when we've done these before, this is the beginning of an indirect proof. Okay. Reason three. Um, so from the last step or the last proof, we learned that the perpendicular bisector of each of these, right? So the perpendicular bisector of AB must cross through the center of the circle, All right? So let's just draw that about in here, perpendicular bisector, and the perpendicular bisector here of BC must also cross through the center of the circle. All right, so we're going to write the perpendicular bisectors of AB and BC must, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to do these steps in the reverse order. They must uh, both Uh, contain O, which is the center of our circle. All right, uh, and the reason is this is problem one, or previously proven. Number one. All right, but we also know, because we're assuming that these are on the same line, that they're collinear. Again, this is just mind-bending to me because we're assuming that they're collinear. So we've got A, B, and C right here, that their perpendicular bisectors, if they're collinear, are perpendicular to the same line. All right, so the perpendicular bisectors of A, B, and BC must also be parallel. And the reason for that is because two lines that are perpendicular to the same line must be parallel. All right? So for one thing, from the previous uh, proof that we did, we know that the perpendicular bisectors have to meet at the center of the circle. But we also know by our false assumption here that if A, B, and C are collinear, then their perpendicular bisectors are perpendicular to the same line and therefore they must be parallel. That is a contradiction. They can't be parallel and intersect at O. And so we would have right here that A, B, and C cannot be collinear.
are not collinear. And the reason is contradiction in steps three and four. And then I'm running out of room here. Step tr two is not true. All right, or assumption in step two is not true. It's false. Okay. Oh, darn. I'm going to pause this uh, or start a new video so that we can take a look at our last theorem. Or not last theorem, last problem, problem five.